it again. Sweet moments there. Donald Trump and his granddaughter and his grandson at his North Carolina rally over the weekend. Do note the bulletproof glass that is there up now since Butler. So pleased to have with us their mom, also the RNC co-chair, Laura Trump. Welcome in, Laura. So good to have you today. Hey, great to be with you. You know, I think when we see that, I mean, those are your children. They're there. We're hearing about these failures. So I just want to, you know, humanize it a lot for people. You know, this is someone's grandfather. This is your uh, father-in-law. And now we know the, the extent of which he's been briefed about other threats and the failures have not been remedied, apparently. Your biggest takeaway from this report today that was released, Laura? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's upsetting. You're right. This is, to some people, he's uh, a guy running for president. I think we learned, maybe it was a few days ago, that 28 percent of Democrats are maybe quietly hoping that an assassination attempt against Donald Trump is successful, which is is so concerning and sick and uh, unbelievable, truly, Bianca, in the United States of America. But I think what we've seen is that clearly there were epic failures. Clearly, the more information we get, I think the more concerned people continue to be. Now, I was at the rally. Uh, you just showed a video there with my daughter, Carolina, and my son, Luke. Eric and I took them to my hometown of Wilmington, North Carolina, mm -hmm. with my father-in-law over the weekend. I can tell you the security was incredibly heightened. You see the bulletproof glass right yeah. there. And uh, from the start to the finish of the rally, our travel experience, they are definitely taking things very seriously now. But it is concerning that you have a, you know, a foreign actor like Iran trying yeah. to assassinate Donald Trump, trying to influence an election. I think it's very clear that these are, are individuals who do not want to see Donald Trump back in that White House for a whole host of different sure. reasons. But and this is the United States. We cannot stand for things like this. And, and I'm going to give uh, kudos to the, the current Secret Service agents. They're definitely on top of things right now. We're happy to hear that. And we know uh, there'll be another rally in Butler coming up on October the 5th. But it does seem like they're not individually taking blame. There's no one that's been let go. They keep blaming funding and resources. And that doesn't seem like things that can be fixed overnight the way our government and bureaucracy works. So ultimately, it does seem like there's still exposure here if you look at some of these underlying facts coming out today. Yeah, I think that's that's 100 percent true. And I'll tell you, as the daughter-in-law of this man, I constantly think about this. My husband, Eric, and I think about it and sadly talk about it all the time. And, um, you know, I really hope that we see some accountability of some variety here because mm -hmm. it, it's very concerning that this was ever allowed to happen. And you're right. I think that the idea that we're just going to move on and no one is, is going to be held responsible doesn't sit right, certainly with me and with a lot of Americans. Uh, so, look, we're, we're going to have to wait and see what happens. But I do hope yeah. that at the end of this, we get a clear picture of what happened, where every single failure was, and, and someone truly has to be held accountable. And, and more with the second assassination attempt. We learned Ryan Routh indicted on the attempted assassination charge. Took a few days, though, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, he certainly had a, a, a letter that was very clear about his intentions in terms of what he wanted to do to Donald Trump. But I think if you take a step back from this, Bianca, and, and I alluded to it a moment ago, the fact that you actually have people in this country who are hoping that there mm -hmm. is a successful assassination of Donald Trump is is really, I, I mean, it kind of tells you how how far gone we really are. And, and I'm going to say that the fact that Donald Trump has been demonized the way he has for nearly nine years now, because it started the day he came down the escalator in Trump Tower. Absolutely. And the, the mainstream media, for sure, has never relented. They have continued to try to demonize this man. I can tell you there is no other individual who would literally be putting his life on the line, who would have set aside the, the great life that Donald Trump had to run for president, to make sure that we save this country and, quite frankly, save the world other than Donald Trump. I give him incredible credit, and I hope we can get back to a place in America where, despite our political differences, we can remember at the end of the day that people are human beings, that people are Indeed. fathers, grandfathers, and, and really people uh, at the end of things. And if people um, don't think that that's exactly what's happening, everything you say, I want to cite this example. This is Harris Biden Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo right here on MSNBC talking, using this type of rhetoric just yesterday.
What he says is the opposite. It's just another lie. Like, how did we get here? Let's extinguish him for good. We have an answer. We have a remarkably talented candidate who is sincere, who's pragmatic, who's open. Let's just get it done. I mean, they're saying extinguish. I mean, this is the type of rhetoric um, that they just can't help themselves. And this is from an administration official here, Laura. You know, I don't think it's going to stop. So you're just going to have to continue on, I guess, and and just pray and hope. Uh, what will be your thoughts in the coming, you know, 42 days, 41 days here, as, as you kind of know that this is going to be somewhat of a ever-present threat for you and for your father-in-law? Well, I'll tell you, whenever uh, you have to resort to what you just heard there in order to try and get people to vote for your candidate, it probably means you have a really bad candidate. And I think the Democrats are well aware of that. They're having a hard time selling Kamala Harris to the American people. She is a horrible candidate in terms of the fact that not a single person voted for her. Think back to whenever she ran for president the first time around. She had to drop out before her home state of California even yeah. voted. It's hard to sell radical ideas and bad policies. And four more years of the detrimental effect of Kamala Harris in the White House to the American people. So if this is where they're headed and this is how they're going to play things over the next 41 days, I think they're going to have a hard time convincing the American people that they should vote for Kamala Harris. We, on the other hand, are, of course, going to highlight what Donald Trump did while he was president, continue to talk about the ways he's going to make your life better, put more money in your pocket, secure our southern border, keep crime out of your communities, and have peace agreements again instead of wars breaking out around the world. That is how we will continue to operate. Well, they're going to operate with some help uh, from the corporate media. Uh, Harris is sitting down with Stephanie Rule of MSNBC today, and this is Rule's own words just a few days ago with Bill Maher. I'm not. Kamala I just Harris said I'm not going to vote for her. is not running for perfect. She's running against Trump. We have two choices, and so there are some things you might not know her answer to. And in 2024, unlike 2016 for a lot of the American people, we know exactly what Trump will do, who he is, and the kind of threat he is to democracy. Uh, how do you think this interview is going to go? I mean, we already know the script, Laura, when you have the uh, press there. So she's going to sit down and do a softball interview, and Americans are supposed to uh, think this is some type of, you know, fair and free press that we're operating in 2024 here in America. Yeah, she can't go to the Al Smith Center because there, there are too many variables there. She can't be possibly right. uh, put in a situation where she might be questioned or asked truly about where she stands on things. Yeah, she's going to MSNBC. Of course she is. And, and we're going to get very little information. Look, check out the Oprah town hall, if we're going to call it that, with Kamala Harris last week. It was an epic disaster for her. If things are not scripted and her handlers do not have full control over everything she's saying, then... Kamala Harris falls flat on her face. I am sure this will be softball. I am sure we will get very few answers in terms of how she would operate as president of, a, president of the United States. But she's been vice president, Bianca, for four years nearly. And look at how people's lives are going. That, again, is going to be the issue when people are going to vote. People are starting to vote already in a lot they of are. states. Mail voting has dropped. Early voting has started in places like Pennsylvania. And so whenever she goes out and do, does these interviews that really shed no light on anything that the American people want to know about her. I don't think it helps her. I can tell you that Donald Trump will continue going out and engaging with the American people, continuing to do things like press conferences, which we have yet to see Kamala Harris do. That might be a way that she could actually allow people to see who she is and what she's all about. But we know that the, uh, the whole goal of the Kamala Harris campaign is to shield her from that and to make sure we know as little as possible about this candidate. Yeah, we'll be watching that interview. And also, this could be a real uh, changing week for her. She's actually bold enough to go to the border. Um, and all of the problems we've had under their open border policy, it's going to be hard for her and even the legacy media to avoid that topic. Laura Trump, always a pleasure to have you. You have such a beautiful family. And we loved seeing that clip um, of your children out there. So thanks for being with us. And certainly, we'll be speaking with you very soon. Thank you very much.